everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff, and welcome to a confession. I, uh, I failed. I failed you. I failed myself. I'm a little disappointed in me, I gotta say, but all will be made clear shortly. Um, about, I don't know, eight, nine months ago. I made a video I'll put up there that explained about my wood hoarding tendencies, the, a problem that I, I think a lot of us have, um, and how I was going to go about dealing with it. And I pledged in that video that I was not going to buy any more wood until I used up, I, I want to say at three shelves worth of wood out of my stock. I was not going to buy any more wood. Well, I have failed. I have failed you. <laughs> I have failed myself. Uh, because, let me explain what happened. I was building this joinery cabinet and I was, I taken down almost all of my Douglas fir off the top rack on that side of the shop. I'm down to Two pieces, I believe. I took down the third last piece of Douglas fir off that rack. And I had it all laid out here and I was working on it. I even had some things processed, some parts processed, and I was into this cabinet. And I got a message from my friend, works at a lumber yard, runs the sawmill at the lumber yard. We, we have a ton of Douglas fir around here. And at this lumber yard, no. Not going to get to that point yet. Anyway, he sends me this picture of this big, huge stack of Douglas fir. And he says, we're, we're clearing this out. Do you want this? And I said, no, I don't. I have a ton of wood that I need to use. And it said, it's a bunch of 12 foot and 10 foot lengths, one inch thick Douglas fir. We need to get it out of here. Boss says a hundred bucks. I looked up at my Douglas fir rack and I said, for a hundred dollars, we're going to go outside in a minute. I'm going to show you this stack of Douglas fir and you tell me that you say no. Okay. Let's go outside and have a look. I don't think you say no either, despite what you've promised people on YouTube. Okay. So here is my new stack of Douglas fir. It is, like I said, these are the short ones, the 10 footers. And then we got another two feet on these ones down on the bottom. And yeah. So I did some quick math and figured out that this is about somewhere between 700 and 800 probably board feet of rough sawn Douglas fir. And for a hundred dollars comes out to between what 15 cents or so i don't know i'm not a math guy significantly less than a dollar a board foot for all this douglas fir so yeah you tell me that you get sent a picture like this by somebody who says hundred dollars and you say no because I couldn't manage to do it. Let's go back inside and I'll tell you how I got all of this wood for a hundred dollars, what the process was that made this wood. Okay, so this lumber yard that my friend works at does a lot of timber frame materials. So they've got a lot of beams. These particular beams that we're talking about today were eight by eight beams. So, we'll do ourselves an 8x8 eight eight beam. Right? So, they got a bunch of these sitting out in the yard. Let's come down a little bit. 8x8 eight, eight eight beams sitting out in the yard. And over time, they're in a big pile, right? Over time, we're on the west coast of Canada. So, they get weathered along one side in a big bundle, right? 
And then people come by and they need 8x8 eight eight beams for, say, the interior of a timber frame building or whatever. Even the exterior of a timber frame building. And uh, they look at this stack of beams and they go, well, those aren't any good. Because this one side is all weathered up. Possibly this side, if it was on the outside of the bundle, right? So what are they going to do? They're not going to just have these sitting around not selling. So what they do is they take them back over to the mill and they take an inch off each side. They take an inch off this side and they flip it and they take an inch off this side and they flip it and they take an inch off this side and flip it and an inch off this side. So we got an eight inch long one by, two seven inch long one bys and a six inch long one by. 10 and 12 feet long so that they can now make six by six beams and put them in the six by six beam pile so what are they going to do with these one inch off cuts essentially from these beams well my buddy's going to message me and say hey do you want this big stack of wood and apparently i'm going to say yes so today our mission is to go through that stack of wood Organize them into what's best and what's not best and bring the 20 or so best ones and restock my rack. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch me do all of that because that's not going to be interesting sorting through them. But if if I do get them categorized, I'll show you uh, which ones I picked for which purpose and why. And uh, that's mission for this afternoon. All right, let's go. So I started by uh, just kind of laying them all out across the driveway and getting them all swept off so I could get a good look at them at about uh, 40 at a time or so because that's what fit in a nice line on the driveway. And I started separating them into uh, essentially quarter sawn or rift sawn versus flat sawn boards. So basically straight grain versus wavy curly looking ones and setting aside the best of the best of the straight grain ones because those are the ones that I was going to actually load up into the shop and get up on the rack and the rest of them I was going to get stacked around the back under my deck. Okay so this is where we've gotten to at this point we've got uh, these are the 10 footers that I have selected the straightest cleanest most not free uh, of the 10 footers. I've got 20 of those and those up there are the 12 footers. I've got four of those. Those, uh, These are the cream of the crop so to speak and uh, we're. I don't think I'm gonna get all of them on that rack but I'm gonna pick through these ones in order as I am putting them up on the rack uh, best to worst. I'll start with the 12s obviously on the bottom and then I'll go best to worst and see how many of these I can get up on the rack. Uh, let's get inside. We'll cut some stickers out of some uh, 2x4 and we'll get stacking inside. And this was about the uh, time when the COVID-19 uh, isolation stuff started happening and my kid was home from school all the time so I decided to get him out helping me and uh, he is marking off four foot lengths on a bunch of them that I didn't mind cutting up to uh, make stickers for the ones that were going to go around the back under the deck um, and under a tarp so I got him doing that and then while he was marking them off once he had them marked off, I could get them cut up. Just brought the jigsaw out because it was quick enough and easy enough to do it this way. And then uh, he could bring them around back and get them all stacked up in uh, in the backyard, ready for us to bring around the, the long ones to get stacking into the major stack. And uh, 
after he got them all, all the sticker, which confused him why we would call them stickers because they're not actually stickers. After he got those all back there, uh, we had to have a parkour break. And after parkour break was done, we could <laughs> get loading them up around the back and uh, get them all stickered and stacked under the deck. And that's all there is to that. Well, got it all stacked up. I got my 18 or so best ones up on the rack. And uh, we got all the rest of them moved around back and all stickered up and stacked in the backyard, eh? Thanks to my friend here. Sure. My boy. Yeah. My helper. It was... My employee. Don't call me that. No? No. Oh. Okay. I, so, <laughs> so pretty much, I guess, I guess if, um, if my wrists are going to be hurt, then I'll get paid for it. If your wrists are going to hurt, I'm going to pay you? Is that what the... No, I mean, I, I meant to, that came out wrong. Okay. I meant to say, if I'm going to hurt my wrists. I might as well get paid to do it. I suppose. I didn't realize that you hurt your wrist. It was really hurting my wrist when I was moving it. They were pretty heavy. We, yeah, we, they were really heavy. We lugged them all around the back, and some of them were heavier than other ones, but we got it all done, and a little bit of hard work is good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Yeah, and, and I guess also thank you for watching the two days we did that. Two days? We didn't. Well, it was... No, like an hour, like twice. Yeah, but we it's had like but days. we had to turn it off. Like we had to turn it off twice and then do it the next day. And then now we're doing the outro this day. No, <laughs> this is the third day. Yeah, we're third doing outro on the third, third day. day. That yeah. counts as three days' work, apparently. Yeah, because because I'm not paying you for three days' work because we did an hour, two days in a row, and then an outro on the third day. You don't get paid for three days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm getting paid. For doing work for a couple of hours. Yeah, a couple hours. And then doing this. Yeah. Well, you're not getting paid but for this. But not part. really this. No. Not exactly. No, this. I'm not paying you for this. Yeah, you, unless. Um. <laughs> anyway, that's all for this one. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Say goodbye to the folks. Bye bye. Maybe, what are you doing with your shirt there? Um, wait, wait, wait. Say that again. I say what again? Say, say, say goodbye to the folks. Okay, say bye to the folks. Say bye to the folks. Uh, <laughs> bye to the folks. All right, let's go. All right, then. Walk, 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 walk.